All right, we're live. Hey, everybody. Welcome to episode 48 of the Brunch Ladies of Conchi Consignment. This week, we have a very special guest. We have Chris of the Click Creative, and uh, she'll be linked up all in the show notes. And we're just very excited to have her on and be able to brunch with her today. And uh, welcome, Chris. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. It's fun to be here. Yeah. We're glad you're here. All right. Well, first of all, I, I got to show off a little bit here, right? Please do. Check out this I made. Oh, my goodness. It's a little over embellished. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> Quite the embellishment. Wow. Did you yeah, all it? over embellished. You Did know, you, you can hang some ornaments from those leaves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have to put a, a picture of that on our uh, social media. I'll have to get a screenshot. All right. And then I made a little cheese board with my eBay cheese um, plate. Yeah. With jalapeno oh, olives and uh, mm. cheese. Yeah. Got to have those olives. I am really stunned. That. <laughs> right? <laughs> poor, poor Chris, it's like before it's eight o'clock in the morning um, there. And uh, coffee. I was going to say, I hope coffee. you have coffee. Yeah. 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 Still early. a little too early for me to be, you know, imbibing. Yeah. But I thought about <laughs> it. So <laughs> let me tell you what I'm doing differently today because I'm still in Anderson. I'm on location in South Carolina, not home. So I was like, what am I going to drink? Mm -hmm. I went to a local store and I've never seen this before. And I was a little hesitant, but I thought, meh, I'm in a hotel room. I'll try it. It's canned oh. Bloody Mary by Cutwater, San Diego, I think it is. Huh. So there's a spicy and a regular. I bought them both to kind of combine them in case I didn't like one or the other okay. they by the can. And I have to say... I am really impressed. It's really thick. Now I don't have, I only had a short stock of celery, so it drowned. In there. <laughs> oh, here, you want some of mine here? Yeah, I could well, use I it. Have, I have enough to go around. So we'll see mine as I drink down. My celery will pop out, but right now it's submerged, but it is actually, I mean, you can see the coating there. It is a thick, wonderful, bloody Mary. I am. Now is it virgin? No. It, no. Oh, okay. No, it comes with bucket in it. It's like ten percent alcohol per can. Hmm. It's, wow. It's and it's nice and thick and spicy. Like I don't know that I'll ever go back. Now I think really? I'm just going to be doing cut water because it's so easy. Here's my ad for cut water. <laughs> cut can, water sponsor us. <laughs> Y'all can send the payment check too. Um, <laughs> Conch consignment. Oh my gosh. Anyway, oh my I gosh. thought I would show you that because this was a real um for better lack of better term crapshoot when I bought it yesterday. Yeah. I yeah. am truly impressed with this beverage. On air reviews, we do it all at brunch ladies. Well, cheers, cheers, ladies. <laughs> cheers. Cheers for the coffee in the oh wait, cheers. Wait, put, where's the tree? There's the tree. I can't get it all in the frame. I can't get it all. Sure. In the frame. <laughs> all right. So are you a coffee aficionado, Chris? Oh, yeah, a little bit. I can only have two cups of coffee a day, like before noon, or I can't sleep. Yeah, but I same. really enjoy it. Like, so you're on the West Coast. Yep. And where on the West Coast? I am in White City, which is a, a town near Medford, Oregon, which people are more familiar with. So mm -hmm. we're not that far from California. It's considered Southern Oregon. So beautiful, Ooh. right? I so I know like, like, coffee visit. is really big out there. Like, is like, yeah. is your town or anything known for coffee, or is that more like northern? Well, we have the Dutch Bros out here, and they okay. spread out. Um, they, you know, spread out to gosh, a lot of places now. But yeah, because of Seattle, back when yeah. in the '90s when coffee was really popular, and there seems like there's a coffee kiosk thingy or drive-through on every corner, or a Starbucks every across from a Starbucks. It's, it's every like if you want coffee, you can yeah. get it. So I loved, and I'm not even sure, I think I might have heard this on like a Crime Junkies episode and I looked it up, but, or maybe it was you, Molly, I don't know, uh, that on the West Coast, they have like the old photo labs, the drive up photo labs that are turned into like drive up coffee places. Yep. I didn't know if they were drive up, uh, you know, photo labs, but they look like that. Certainly awesome. a lot of them are built special for that. But that's they like an old little gas station that they do that with and the gas station's no longer there, but you can drive on both sides of the middle of the building. Yeah, yeah. it's a lot like that. I think they build a lot of them special now, but they're meant, meant to look like that. So 
I so never, I, I've never have seen one in real life. Oh my God. I totally yeah, think that is so exciting. My husband pictures. is from Olympia, Washington. So we go out to Olympia in Seattle and Portland. And um, whenever we're there, I always have to go to Portland to my favorite bookstore. But oh, go, yeah. Yeah. Powell's? Yes, Powell's. Ah! I, have, I have a Powell's coffee mug. I don't have it with me, but love Powell's. Yeah. Um, but we, lo the first time I'm out there, I couldn't believe the ease of getting coffee was, yeah. it was everywhere. And it wasn't just Starbucks, like all these kiosks and it amazing coffee. Uh, my husband is a fan of Batdorf and Bronson, which the started in Olympia. Oh, cool. um, and he loves that. So every time we go home or my in-laws will ship us bags of that. But there is a kiosk drive through there that I have to go every time. And when I'm there, I'm usually there for about 10 days. I always get the punch card and I always fill my punch card <laughs> my free because every morning I have to go there because yes. their coffee is just so smooth and delicious and oh, it's so good. It's just kind of like a tradition. We have we have Starbucks, of course, but we also have like like I said, Dutch Brothers, and then we have another one called Human Bean, and then there's there's all the little startups, and you have to try them because you got to support yeah. local, you know. <laughs> yeah, support the local. That's what I love. Yeah, yeah. One of our uh, at the same time I opened uh, Conchi Consignment, one of. I, she wasn't a friend at the time, but like the same weekend, uh, one of our mutual friends opened a coffee shop in Conshohocken, a local coffee shop, and she's just been killing it. Yeah. Wow. Daniela of Fiend. I mean, she's just, whoa. She's unreal. She's roasting her own beans now. I mean, she originally just started just as a coffee shop, getting beans from somewhere, another supplier, but she's got several locations, roasts them herself. She's wow. that must smell so good. Oh, so good. right. Mm -hmm. oh, so good. So and good. scavenger life, right? Roast I was just going to ask you about that. <laughs> yeah, we got to visit them. Harrisonburg, yeah. Virginia. Yeah. Pictures are, it didn't happen. <laughs> yep. So. so, all right. So I I'm dying. So we met kind of, we met online a couple years ago. I want to say Chris. Um, yeah. And we just, you know, connect it through different things we were talking about. Like it just, it, it just happened. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like you're drawn to certain people and certain people definitely, but we really connect it um, probably at the beginning of this year because of your whole idea of the word of intention. So a lot of people yeah. that are on our social media have seen uh, this, this word of intention. So do you want to talk about that a little bit? Cause yeah. Yeah. My aunt actually is the one that we need to credit with that idea because um, let's see, during the, you know, pandemic times were it was hard. It was, you know, everybody's isolated and getting depressed and stuff like that. And I think it was uh, New Year's at the end of 2020. So it would have been before New Year's 2021. And she uh, put an idea out to all of our family to pick a word for the year. You know, instead of a instead of a New Year's resolution, which I don't as know. As a group, a word as a group or just as our family, as a family kind of group. So as a project, I guess, kind of thing. My aunt's like that. She's really cool with Love coming up with really great family ideas or activities. So she put out that that idea instead of doing a New Year's resolution to uh, pick a word to set an intention. And at mm -hmm. first, I was like, ah, I don't know, whatever, I'll I'll do it. But I just didn't really, you know, I wasn't sure. But I thought it'd be cool to maybe try it out. Yeah. Um, yeah. New Year's. Do you guys like? Do New Year's resolutions work for you guys? Or not. Never, but I do them every year anyway. Yeah, I, right? I do them and I got like a 50-50 success rate with it. But this year it's gonna be different. <laughs> every year. Yes, yes. I love a I'm a sucker for a fresh start. I love yeah. to start fresh. I know, right? Yeah. So um so anyway, we set our words and I picked, the, it was hard to pick a word. I was like you, Libby. I, I had a really hard time picking a word. Oh, speaking and, of hard times, I'm going to pop up. Sherry, did you pick your word yet? Yeah, Sherry, what's your word? <laughs> Sherry did a great vision up. board, but I don't think she picked a word yet. But go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, she can take as long as she wants, you know, it's her <laughs> word. So um, I picked the word balance. And then every time um, uh, something would, happen because it was a struggle of a year last year was really a struggle yeah. and um you know i would just remember to balance it's like balance uh 
negative things happening, you get to balance it with positive, balance work life with, you know, playtime. And um, so it just, it just was really good to focus on it. And I was mm -hmm. really, um, I was really surprised with how, how much of a difference it made. So that's, that's the story it. of how the word came to being. Yeah. I mean, we had so many good ideas, like bouncing around. Um, Molly, you picked Grace. Grace. Oh, that's um, yeah. And Simplify was one. Hopeful was one. Happy was one. I mean, we had so many good ideas going around in the community. Uh, I, you know, went back and forth. It was a little after the new year before I picked mine. But let me see if I can move my camera around. If not, let me see if you guys can see it. There it oh, is. There it is. Yeah. Let me see if I turn the light off. There you go. Persevere. <laughs> My daughter made daughter, a little thing there. Your daughter did that? It's what? Did your daughter make that? Yeah, she got a cricket for Christmas. So, um, oh, cool. and she's waiting on Sherry. She wants to sh send Sherry one, but Sherry still doesn't know. <laughs> Come on, I love it. Her. And it's actually been so, uh, just in those like moments where I'm going to make a, a different choice or I'm going to choose to sit on the couch rather than, you know, list an item or do a consignment or um, do some shipping. <laughs> I, I look at that. It's looking right at me and I'm like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to feel good if I persevere. Persevere. It's and a good I word. I have it on the side of my basting pin tin. I made a oh, basting yeah. pin. Yeah. Let me see if I have it. I love that. Can you see it? Oh, so, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, that's it's great. He's off. Love it's it. A great word. It is it's a good. great word. Especially when I always felt like it had negative connotation, like a like a negative connotation. Yeah. Like you have to struggle through. But I the more I the more I embrace it, it the more it feels like it. that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, somebody could easily turn it into negative, but you're not gonna do that. Yeah. Heck no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Sherry's got some. She hasn't found the best for you. Courage or resilience or change. All right, let's let's talk this sh through a little bit. Courage yeah. or resilience? I like resilience. I like resilience too. That one's standing out to me. It yeah. is. And Sherry with her uh, new venture of Primal Fit. Uh, right. I think, yeah, I think resilience. That's a good one. That's a good yeah, one. I really do like that. That's a good one for so many places in life. Oh, exactly. Yeah. So much and pressure sure is resilient. Word. I'm like <laughs> <laughs> processing, processing. It's hard to pick that word. It seems like it's just such you're picking a word. Like I don't know. <laughs> it's so final. It's yeah. so final. Only like for 365 days. Be resilient. <laughs> I, I, well, here's the thing for me. Yes, only for 365 days. But grace to me is something I've always tried so hard. Um, to remember being graceful in all things. Now, not physically as I walk down the stairs. Let's not get this twisted. <laughs> that I don't have grace with. But grace in everything I face. And it's it's one that I think is is a lifetime, yeah. lifetime goal to achieve. So what does yeah. grace mean to you? What is that? What does it like embody? Grace to me means, oh gosh, so many things, but it means handling everything in a I don't want to say necessarily accepting way, but in an accepting positive manner with grace that everything that comes your way maybe has a reason, but it's how you handle that reason and move forward with your reaction to the world. Yeah. Handling it in a graceful way to the people who might be dealing it to you. Um, it has, it's, it's a very difficult word. That's yeah. another thing with me. I think grace is a very difficult word and it's a difficult one to come to. Come to. But to yeah. me, it has a lot of meanings. But to me, personally, when I think of grace, it's I look at it as what comes to me. I want to always accept it with grace. And when I turn it back out, whether it's negative or positive to me, that it's put back out in a graceful manner. And yeah. Like, ah, you know. <laughs> That's amazing. And just be that kind of person. So like acting mm -hmm. instead of reacting in a defensive yeah. manner, like pausing and doing it gracefully instead of yes. chaotic. Yes. Yeah. Yes. More yeah. thoughtful, more meaningful, more 
Mindful, mindful. Like more mindful. mindful. I mean, it, that, that one word to me encompasses so many other words. Yeah. That's why I might have picked a really big one. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it, it's all, yeah, it's all consuming. Mm -hmm. It's all consuming. Yeah. To me, at least, you, at least you weren't like me. You didn't pick the same word. See, I picked the same word this year that I picked last year. I still I picked probably will do it next year, too. Because it, it was a big thing. Balance is a big thing. So I was like, I'm going to do it again this year. It worked. Why, why you yeah. know? Fix yeah. what's not broken. So. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. That centered you. I think that's great. It yeah, Sherry has a new business, family members str struggling with Parkinson's and trying to keep it all together. Yes. Yeah. 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 And you're resilient. And yeah. that's why resilience works for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, when I see words like balance and grace, and those are words you can use year after year after year because it's something you're always striving for. And it's, I think, hard for those words to be ingrained in your everyday living if you're not mindful about it for a long right. time, you know? Right. Yeah. So I, I keep, I keep every time I think of Grace, my immediate uh, reaction is I'm a huge Seinfeld fan. There's the episode where I, I just can't help but thinking of it where Mr. Pitt was like, you are the lady at double day was like, you either have grace or you don't have grace. You can't have a little grace. You, it, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I just keep flashing back to that. But um, as Sherry says, your frame of grace is much better than the one on Seinfeld. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, hey. So um, Chris, I, I want to hear all about, so I wanted to see some of your handbag collection because you collect vintage handbags and I got a little thing for those, uh, yeah. my fix. Uh, <laughs> and I also want to talk about your quilting and, uh, which do you want to do first? Um, I can, I, I've been dying to do a show and tell of my vintage purses that probably, I probably should talk about my quilting, you know? Uh, oh, we're going to talk about your quilting. No worries. No yeah. worries. So, um, just so you know, though, I, I don't know a lot about them. I just collect them because they're beautiful and I use them for, for little pieces of art in my, yeah. in, I have a, a, a display where I display them, but I'm not a, I'm not a vintage purse nerd. So I know about Circa when they were made, but I'm not like, oh, this was made and it's made with this material and all this kind of stuff. I just, I just love them. I don't know why. Yeah, we don't care about we don't care about that. We just want to see the pretty bags. I know. We're just saying. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna close this window. It's blinding me. <laughs> Oops. There we no go. No problem. There we go. Okay. Oh, now I can see you. <laughs> oh <laughs> there. Here. Okay, so here's my purses. It's time for show and tell. I don't know about you guys, but like when I was in kindergarten or first grade, and you had show and tell. Do you remember getting all excited yep. about what you're going to bring? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. So I picked out a few of this one is my favorite. So I'm going to show her first. This is a little hard shell purse, and it's got a little bling on the front. See? Oh, my gosh. And uh, it opens. And I love it because. It's, hard. it's a hard shell one. I love hard shell purses. Yeah. And I um, found this. I always like to find them in the wild and just. I was, that's what I was going to ask where you find them. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I've bought a few online that I just couldn't resist. Um, but a lot of times I'll find them at, at uh, vintage shops or antique shops. Or this one I found at the bottom of a bunch of stuff. And it was all it was all like covered with dust. And it took a lot of cleaning, but it wasn't damaged or anything like that. So it was you rescued um, it. Yeah, uh, I did. It's like I being a treasure hunter. I've always liked those treasure hunters where they die for treasure or whatever. Uh -huh. This is my I can't do that. So this is my thing. I love that. That is beautiful. <laughs> this one, it's might be a little hard to see. Let me see if I can tip it. Like a right gold Um I don't know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know cotton fabric and that's it. Maybe you guys don't know. I need to turn you up a little bit here too so I can hear. So um, it's got a lot of gold metallic thread in it. And I like mm -hmm. the ruching here. Yes. It's, yeah. it's just very delicate. And the oh, little, look at the little chain. Look at the little oh. flowers. See? Oh, I love yeah, And that. for everybody listening on podcast, I'm going to pop up. You sent me that really cool picture of how you have them displayed. Oh, yeah. I'm actually going to put that up on our social media. So hop over there if you're listening on podcast and uh, 
to get a peek at some of these beauties. Oh my gosh, so far. I mean, we're two in and I'm like, oh, yeah, I love this. This is my newest acquisition. I have a thing for little tiny pearls. I don't, can you see that? Oh this, my gosh. The detailing on it and it's got this. Oh, what is the bag? Is it be, Is it all beaded? It's sequins. It's, sequins. It okay. it's got sequins mm -hmm. and then it's got little seed pearls. Oh my goodness. And there's beads here. So it's just the detailing. I wish I could show it to you in person. It's it's uh it's just got so much cool detail. Oh my goodness, and, look at the pole has the little pearls. How cute. Yeah. And the along the sides and everything. So oh, it was in really wow. great shape. And again, I just found it at a thrift shop. I think I got it for like four dollars or something. Oh, so, fine. Yeah. That was a great fine. I, I see, I just I just love that. Um, <laughs> And this one, it's very gold. <laughs> yes, it is. It's so, sassy. Yeah, it's it's like a, it's, can you hear that? It's kind of a rough. Mm -hmm. And it's just got really cool detail. I was going to ask what's on the clasp there. I like the clasp. Yeah, Are they it's just like rhinestones? rhinestones? Yeah. I mean, it's supposed to be like a, it's, it's rhinestones. Yeah. There, can you see it? Uh-huh. That is beautiful. I don't mean to blind you. <laughs> I have to say this, y'all. If you're listening on podcast, just get off and go over to YouTube. You <laughs> see these in person. There's well, no. Wear your, wear your sunglasses. Wear your sunglasses. These are blinged out. This you know what? I always when I look at when I look at the handbags, it always makes me wish like I lived in past times like when people would dress up like that and yeah. you would have your little lipstick in the you know purse yep. and you weren't carrying like like me a humongous tote of everything <laughs> but the kitchen like sink in the world. Yeah. like you were put together what era like I think of it too and I always think of like the 50s, the 50s 60s like I, I think of the 40s actually yeah mm -hmm. okay yeah <laughs> that was a good era so very stylish yeah mm -hmm. So this one is interesting. It's, I do not know if it's handmade or not, but why I got it is I don't know if you guys have ever heard of what a Chatelaine is. It's, it was worn in Victorian times and it had kind of this uh, kind of top, but it was a, a, a purse and you attached all kinds of tools to it. So it was like the Victorian ages woman's tool belt. It was so cool. If you get a chance, look it up online. It's spelled C H A T E L A I. I wrote it down. A I N E. Okay. I've and it, seen that in print, but I guess I just didn't bother yeah. to look it up. That My dream is so interesting. One. My dream is to find one in the wild. I mean, they're worth like five hundred, you know, six hundred, seven hundred dollars because they're from Victorian era. But this reminded me of that. This is not a Chatelaine. This is like a crocheted knitted person it's got all this really cool victorian uh oh, detailing wow. and the the, the uh yeah that so I, the ribbon embroidery oh my I gosh mean, that is beautiful. so cool i mean just the chain itself i love yeah, yeah. wow that yeah. is a treasure let's see oh, let tiffany see. said she just got the nicest little chain mail mesh vintage oh. silver clutch on consignment oh nice like you have a list yeah tiffany yeah <laughs> i'm gonna have to see that yeah don't tempt me <laughs> so here's another one this has got that same Ooh, kind of a okay, yeah. and then it's got your the beads it's very sparkly i is like that the all beaded or is there velvet in there it's kind of a, a, a silk. You know how silk oh, is? It's, yeah. not, it's not real shiny, but it's very, or maybe it's polyester. I should know the difference because I deal with fabric, but I just mostly be on cotton. So everything else is just fabric. Just fabric. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty. <laughs> yeah, but it's got some really cool embroidery and little cool seed beads. Can you see it? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I have this one, which is, uh, it's vintage to me. And I know it's provenance because this is the purse I wore at our wedding 25 years ago. Aww, oh, yeah. Uh -huh. it's got the champagne cork in it. Oh, oh that's a cool idea. Awesome. This is, you know, those little stores in the mall where they sell like icing or Claire's and stuff. Uh -huh. We were so poor back then, <laughs> you know? And so I bought this and then I, I kept it. So this is just special. 
So. Oh my God. I think that is so fantastic that you have that mixed in there with special. Here's what I always say. I wish these bags, you know, we come up with these old items, these vintage items, and I'm like, they have such stories to tell. Yes. I wish these handbags could tell us their journeys and what you did with the cork in there. Like it's got a story. You know, yeah. mm-hmm. the stories that these have. Like, I want to know. <laughs> That's why I get them because of the history. And I like to think of somebody buying, looking for just the right bag for their prom or something mm-hmm. and getting it. And what was the night like? And I, I just, I, you know, I often wonder when I get them about that. This one is more of a vintage, I think, 80s or 90s. Remember when we were going from hair metal to grunge, you know, that period, <laughs> where, you know? So it's, it's like, lace which is really tough you know right. uh, over the top of some gold shiny stuff and it's it's also hard shell but it's fabric on the outside it's really cool and it's actually still got its tags in it so i could probably research it ah. so it's a, a maggot i don't know what that is hmm. but yeah it's so that one's pretty cool and then i have this one which is Ooh. look at the beading on this wow I wasn't sure if this would show well. Yes, I can see that. I have a real. I have a very similar one to that. Yes. Yes. This is stunning. And I love the scalloped edge on it. Yeah, it's really sturdy, too. So, and it's got some sort of crunchy stuffing to make it. Oh. Oh. So, So, I'll show you one more. Or else we'll be I just here all love day. when there was such attention to detail right. and everything wasn't made to be disposable and right. you know, know. Before fast fashion and it's it's just amazing. Yeah, it is. It's so it's just so exquisite. Mm-hmm. I mean, it took so much time to to make these. Unless this one is just your standard tapestry bag. I, I really love like the tapestry bag. bag. You like these? I love the tapestry bags. Uh-huh. I do. Yeah, I have way too many of these tapestry bags, but there's just, I don't know. It's carpet bag, right? Is that what you would refer to it as carpet bag, maybe? I don't know. Maybe. I, mean, I have used, I have said that in my descriptions when I've sold them, yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, this bag is not a carpet bag because carpet bags are way huge. Okay. Right. So right. It's tapestry or carpet bag or something like Love that. Do you remember, or I have to ask you if you've ever had one of these because it was probably one of the most fun items we've ever sold. Do you remember what it is, Molly? It was a purse. One of the most fun? Oh, the alligator? Yeah, the alligator with the real alligator head on it. And we put it on auction. This is like going back, what, like seven or eight years now. Yeah. I mean, the like it was almost hard to touch. Like it was. It was creepy. It had its teeth it and everything. It was. But they were. They're super sought after with the oh. like real heads and the little feet on there. Was, you're creeping me out right now. <laughs> we were like talking up on auction. I don't know what. Maybe starting at like twenty nine dollars or something like that. And this thing just kept getting bit up and bit up by all these different yes. people. And we're like, who? Like, <laughs> yeah. Who has these? Who collects these? Do you have one of those in your collection, Chris? No, but as you're telling me, I'm like, I know that's creepy, but if I saw that, I would totally You have would to grab, grab it, it, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'd grab that baby and I'd resell it in a heartbeat. Are you kidding me? <laughs> so if you find one, you know who to call. <laughs> it was quite interesting. It really was. I don't mm-hmm. think I've seen anything mm-hmm. quite like it. Yeah. I like those unique ones. It's the ones it that unique. kind of speak. Oh, 100% to it. unique. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, that's, that's it. I mean, I have a couple more, but they're just, you know. Well, that is a beautiful collection. Oh my gosh. It really is. It really is. So the other thing you do, and you do a lot of this on um, Click Creative. So head over to um, Chris's social media and you can see all of her quilting and, and fabrics and fun stuff. So my mom is a quilter. And so she, of course, I think she's probably at church now, but she's dying to see... (laughs) <laughs> um dying to see this because I I don't know if it's as popular on the East Coast as it is on the West Coast because um she does it at her church and it's kind of like with the older women and they're you know it, it's kind of like a dying art honestly quilting yeah. uh, in our com- in our community here I don't know about the community at large uh, but you just do the most beautiful, beautiful quilts. And I like your description of being a rock and roll quilter. 
Oh, that came from my my son. Actually, is the one who gave me that. Yeah, name. Love that. he was actually a in, in a band uh, up in Portland, and uh, I remember we went up to there to visit, and we were walking downtown, and and I was looking in the fabric shop window, and I said, "Oh, you probably think I'm old and boring now," because I I actually came to quilting when I was only 32, so I was awfully young for like you described the it, yeah. it, the tr- it it seems to be portrayed, I'm going to say, as a more older woman's thing, but it's really, it's actually not. There's a lot of really cool young people that are bringing new vibrancy to the art of quilting. Anyway, so my son and I are standing in front of this uh, window and I'm like, you probably think like I'm old and boring. And he's like, no mom, that's art. You're the rock and roll quilter. So I always- Oh my gosh, that's so special. That like struck me immediately. Yeah, so- yeah. Um, so what, how did, how, like, how did you get into it? What, what got you started? A friend, of, a friend of mine, uh, my kids were getting older, right? My son had already moved to Portland. So we had our daughter left in the nest and she was uh, 16, 15, 16 at that time. So she had her own and, you know, everybody's moving out and, you know, when your first kid moves out, you worry and all that. And so uh, I had a lot of, <laughs> so you get it. So had a lot of free time to worry, especially when your son is in a, you know, a, a band. <laughs> so I had a lot of, a lot of time to worry about stuff, about kids and all that. And mm-hmm. I, I really needed a hobby. And my friend Mary uh, was a quilter, and she made the most amazing quilts. Because when I thought about quilts, I, I didn't even know how to sew. I mean. Uh, no way. Yeah. Home ec was one of the um, few classes that I ever did bad in. I mean, I, I really struggled and I didn't come from a tradition of people sewing in my family. This is not what I thought the backstory yeah, was going to be. I'm, I'm a little surprised. Okay. Yeah, cool. It never is. So, uh, I mean, I've talked it's to never too late, people. folks. It's never too it's late. Never too late. <laughs> Here I am in my 30s. I, I don't even know how to thread a sewing machine. Okay. And um, I'm looking at my friend Mary's quilts and I thought of quilting as, you know, that old fashioned kind of patchwork, like like the one I'm working on now, like this Dresden plate. Oops, there go all my purses. Like this Dresden plate is very traditional, right? These are vintage fabrics. That's the kind of, when I thought of quilting, I thought of, of that kind of stuff. That's and funny. I really, there goes all the purses. <laughs> So anyway, I thought of um, I thought of quilting more as the the traditional patchwork, and that really didn't appeal to me. But you should have seen my friend's quilts. I mean, she did a lot of Asian inspired and and just just beautiful like artwork. And then um, she she convinced me to sign up for a class at my local quilt shop. Mm-hmm. So I did that. I met some great people, and it was a, it, and I found out I could really do it. So um, it was, it, that was just how I got started. And, and then I realized it wasn't making a blanket. It was more making art, art. that mm-hmm. I could use or, you know, gifts I could give away. And, and I just developed a passion for it. It was just my, it was my niche, my way I create things. So Yeah, and it's beautiful. There was one particular quilt that you did that I love, and it was that red and black. It was kind of like a rag, like... Oh yeah, I think you called it a rag quilt. Am it's I... a rag quilt. Yeah, okay. it's made with flannel, and it's it's actually a quilt as you go kind of a thing, and and you uh, snip the edges and then you wash it a few times so it gets all ruffly. It's really cool. Um, I love that. They're, they're fun to make. I made it for my niece for Christmas. So oh, it was a gift. Oh yeah. wow. All right. Love now, it. do you ever sell? I mean, I know you're, you're an online reseller as well. And that's the mm-hmm. community we met through. Do you ever, oh, wait, Sherry has a comment here. It's <laughs> oh, for some of us, it's too late. <laughs> oh, Sherry, I love you. I think it might be for me. I don't know how to use a sewing machine. I can't stand to sew. I wish I loved it, but yeah, you know, it's well, not for me. Everybody <laughs> finds their own way to be creative, whether it's yeah. Like- yeah writing or cooking or I mean I could never imagine myself do what you guys do. Libby paints furniture. That's her creativity. Ooh. That's my that's my baby. I love that. Ooh. I'll have yeah. to see some of that. Yeah. Yeah. Um so I'm so I'm sorry. I just had to pop that up there. So you the rag quote and do you sell these online or do you 
I've sold a rag quilt before. I've made like four mm-hmm. or five of them and I've sold one of them that I made. Um, and I've, I've done quilt commissions for people, which means they hire me because wow. well, it can take a while. It can take three to six months to do certain mm-hmm. specific quilts. So I don't sell a lot of them online, but when I get time, I will make up like table runners or rag quilts and stuff and put those online. Cause it's, it's fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, and it's so, it's so hard when you're making something like that because you put so much time and effort, like how do you ever assign a value to that? That can be hard, you know, with the commissions, it's easier because it's more, you know, straightforward. You ask them what they want and then you determine how much the value is and they know going in that it's going, it's going to, it's, it's not cheap, but it's handmade, it's handmade, handcrafted. Yeah, that's what they're paying for. Like like you said, Molly, they're paying for the history. They're paying yeah. for the tradition. They're paying for the uniqueness and, and all that kind of stuff. I mean, I've seen, I don't know if you guys have heard about Sisters, Oregon. Um, every year they have a huge quilt show in Sisters. And I've been lucky enough to go to it a few times. And I've seen quilts there that were just oh, amazing works of art. And they sold for in the thousands. So I don't sell my quilts for that much, you know. Yeah. But now do you, I have a question from my mom since she's not here. She was all interested. Uh, so do you do machine quilting, hand quilting, combination of the two? I do machine quilting. I okay. haven't taken on hand quilting yet. That's a, that is an art I would like. There's the thing is about quilting. I've been doing it for 20 years and I still have so much to learn. And technically, I mean, when I meet people and I like in the quilt shop or something like that, and I'm like, uh, I've been quilting for 20 years and they'll be like, honey, I've been quilting for 50 years. You're new. And it's like, I'm still kind of considered new. <laughs> so, baby like, of a family. Oh, baby. Tw- I'm like 20 years something. They're like, no. That's my mom at, oh, at 70. Years. My mom at 70 is the baby of the quilting community in her church. Yeah. She's the young one. Wow. Yeah. Your mom's yeah. young at heart too. I love that video that she made with the... <laughs> Whatever it was, what was it? A, a shawl? A shawl and- that you- oh yeah, yeah. We have we have way too much fun. We have it's way it. too much fun. It's funny. She has a hoot. And the TikTok, we did a TikTok. It was so funny. We did a TikTok of my mom with that sewing machine. We got a oh, sewing machine the- in the- on the- on the- consignment. The- you know, I researched it, whatever, and I I put it up what last year a year and a half ago and I didn't really think that much of it. And when Chris saw it, she was like, "Oh, is that a featherweight?" Like a singer featherweight, it was yeah. like a vintage machine. Like just from the video, you knew exactly what that machine was. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm not a machine expert or anything, but, but that's, that's kind of a up. thing that <laughs> that's kind of a thing that a lot of quilters want. Is they want that. Like, my mother in law has one, and she's a big quilter, and that was her thing. Was I got to get a featherweight, and she got one eventually, but. Yeah, so it's funny. sold that's for her. a couple hundred dollars very very quickly, very quickly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah my mom true. was like, we were, I was cracking up. That's why I had to do the video because she was like, oh my God, this machine is amazing. It's so beautiful. Look, this thing quilts. And I was like, let's do a video. You are hilarious with this yeah. thing. Yeah. Fun. They sell for like five to $700, depending on the condition. And the fact that that one ran, and I was just like, I was drooling. That's, <laughs> I'm going to get myself a featherweight this year. That's my, my thing that I want to get this year. So if you come across another one, we will keep you in mind for that. Absolutely. I didn't even know what a gem I had, like what a gem I had. I mean, yeah. I knew it was expensive, but I didn't realize just how sought after it was at the time, you know? Yeah. Well, you can rest on a really good deal to somebody who's going to treasure it because those things are sought after and they're, they are just, they are treasures and they're workhorses too. They only do a straight stitch. But, you know, um, these newer machines are made with plastic parts and stuff. And they're just, oh, God, I sound like an old lady now. <laughs> you can make things like the years here. <laughs> but they don't. They don't. It's they true. Don't. Thank you. <laughs> it's true. Wait, man, so I said this to you, Molly, the other day is the whole idea of um, planned obsolescence. Have you heard of that? So it's like, when, all right, so, and I only, I probably only know this term. I thought everybody used it. it was because I was like in environmental science and things like that. But planned obsolescence is like when they start it, let's say I'm going to use GE as usually the example they use. So they would make a refrigerator, right? 
and it would last for 60, 60 years. And then all of a sudden refrigerators started lasting like five to 10 years in the lifespan. So it's not that we don't have the technology. It's that these manufacturers are actually planning so that they can sell more, sell more. Yeah. The break in 10 years. They're designed planned obsolescence. They're designed to, to break. Right. So you have to keep like with the iPhone. I mean, I love yeah. Apple products and yeah. And please don't kill me, ghost of Steve Jobs. But um, <laughs> like, seriously, I notice every couple of years after the phone, you know, is it's it starts to yeah. slow down or glitch out and they don't make updates for mm -hmm. certain things, you know, like the MacBook. MacBooks are expensive and I love mine, love it to death. But, you know, I've had it for maybe six years and that's already considered really old. I right. just replaced my 10 year old MacBook Pro with a new one literally last week, and it was a yeah, giant. Cool. I saw that you had yeah. something go wrong with yours, and that you, or that you needed, oh, it didn't support the software for streaming. Yeah, it wasn't supported. It was just a nightmare, and you couldn't fix it because it was just that it wasn't, it yeah. was an older version. Yeah. So I'm but on a newer it, version now. It didn't break though, right? No, we still have it. So you can use it for a good backup or for a second machine. Yeah, so, I mean, my husband still uses it for, you know, he's got spreadsheets and stuff on there. So, but we've got yeah. the new one now that I can work on. For yeah, I mean, I think we're all like victims of that planned obsolescence. And yeah, yeah. yeah you know, the days of taking your sewing machine or your vacuum to get repaired. Mm -hmm. I, you know, we're, I think we're starting to see a little trending back toward that. Yeah. Back toward that. But it's just, we're not. We're not set up in society like that right now. Yeah, I have an old-fashioned uh, uh, sewing machine repair guy, right? And mm -hmm. he's like that. you can take, I can take my machines in there. I have a vintage brother. It's probably from the late 50s, early 60s. And it's a workhorse too. We call it the boat anchor because it's so heavy. So, you know, I take that there. But like um, with my newer Viking, it's it's something you have to take it to the dealership. And, you know, it's... Uh, but he can he can do repairs, but he's the only guy around here like that. And like you were saying, Libby, it's like it's just it's kind of going the way of the dinosaur. And I miss that. I really miss yeah. that. Yeah, I I agree. I agree. Oh, backing up a second. So this machine is called the featherweight, right? It's a little misleading because those machines aren't feather. They're they're heavy. Maybe right? it was featherweight. Yeah. Oh, God, they're really heavy. Maybe yeah. it was. Maybe it was for anybody listening. <laughs> well, probably did the featherweight because the typical back then was that you were using the table sewing machines, the built. Oh, yeah. yeah. Maybe that's it because they yeah. were. They so were off featherweight because you're not moving okay. a piece of furniture. <laughs> yeah, it was not a featherweight. It was like it was like forty plus pounds once it was packed to ship. I'm going right. to say it was around 40 pounds. Maybe yes. Because it was portable. A lot of people I know take them, um, like if you're going to a quilt retreat out of town or something, they'll take their yeah. feather their featherweights with them. Yeah. So maybe it was because back in the day, that was considered portable. That was like high tech for back then, maybe. <laughs> we need to Google this. We need to find yes. more. Yeah. yeah, we need more. We need more information. I need to put on my glasses and get researching. There you go. <laughs> We do that. We do that. All right. So I, Molly, I want to ask you about something because we've uh -oh. talked about this um, mid-century cat ad nauseum, well, our favorite like pottery cat, the orange cat. And we had some good news this week, right? Oh my gosh, y'all. I don't even know how to tell you. I wish I would have videoed Nick. So this pottery cat, which was what, 27 inches tall, then sold and got shipped to Canada. So my poor husband is the one that had to package this because I'm in South Carolina and he's home. Well, he took this and he took it very seriously and he packaged this baby up. In fact, I did a reel. He was scared. I mean, I, I saw the look in his eyes. He was scared. He was nervous, but he would <laughs> call me and he's like, okay, I got this box. I've got, it's got reinforced corners. I'm doing this with it. I'm like, just, you know, Peanuts and bubble wrap, you got this. So, and of course, it had to be going international, right? Of course, okay. it had to be going God international. God forbid. It, yeah, it had to go international. So he, <clears throat> I, I did a video, a reel with this, so you can go look at the reel. It's on, on our social media of a video he took of how he had boxed it. And he has been 
on the edge of his seat every day. He texts me or call me. Did it get there yet? Did they get it yet? Is it there yet? Where is it? Is it there yet? And I'm trying to relax because I'm in love with this thing. I want the, I wanted this cat. I just, it was out of my price range, quite honestly. Libby does um, not want yeah. this cat to break because she's just in love with the cat. So we have all been on pins and needles waiting for this cat to get to Canada. Well, last night, Nick just left. He was here for the weekend. He just left this morning to head back home. Libby texts me a screenshot of our feedback on eBay. And here it says... Royal Hager MCM Atomic Red Orange Winking Cat. The feedback is gorgeous addition to my collection and expertly packaged. Yes. Nick was so air. excited. I'm <laughs> like, oh my gosh, now hashtag Team Nick's head is only going to get bigger because he was like fist pumping in the hotel room. <laughs> like, whoop, whoop, that's right. I'm good. <laughs> For any of you that do ship odd items, you know how challenging and you know, even with the best packing, sometimes you just cross your fingers because you don't know what happens to that. And as sellers, we're responsible for it until it arrives safely at the destination. Uh, so it's nerve wracking to say the least. All right. So you want to know the kicker of the story? There's there's actually another another nail add on to the story. So he's all proud of himself. And gives himself some fist pumps. And he's like, comes back to me being funny. He's like, how about you read that to me one more time? What is it? <laughs> I'm an expert packer. That's right. I'm an expert packer. Well, what sells that he's on his way home now to ship? The only other tall, odd, horrible thing to pack. I have a vintage, probably 21 foot. Um, 21 inch. Noodle. 21 inch. 21 inch, sorry, 21 inch. <laughs> Yeti poodle. I'm thinking about the feet, how they bulk out. Oh, That's why I got yeah. Yeti poodle. Is that what you call? Hand painted Italian ceramic spaghetti poodle that is tall, thin with a bigger base. And now he's got to go home and pack it. <laughs> so when it's sold, I go, oh, you got this. You got this. <laughs> What did he do? What was his face like? Was he excited? You've got to be kidding me. What are the chances that the two most fragile, crazy things you have would ship when you're not home? <laughs> yeah, that's that's not right. It's that's not, not right. right. He's got this. He'll do it. <laughs> well, the most important thing he has to ship is my new Guns N' Roses sweatshirt. That's right. Oh, He's that's got right. I forgot it. He's got it with I can't wait for shirt. that. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> I want a picture of you in that. Yes. He's. he's oh, he's, yeah. He's yeah, we had some fun at uh, we had some fun at resale therapy this week. That's we so always fun. have fun. I enjoy that so much. I just like going and see. It's like again, show and tell. I love going and then the Instagram one you have, Insta Resale Therapy, where mm -hmm. you unboxing. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> yeah, we have we have way too much fun. I am always like, it's so much work to get yeah. ready for, and I'm be like, oh gosh, you know, like all this work, and then I get there and I'm like, this is so much fun. Oh, I can't God, wait for God. next week. And we go through this every week, right? Oh, we get ready for retail <laughs> therapy. You guys make it look so easy. I would be like, I would be a nervous wreck. I'm better behind the camera and you guys are really good in front of it. I mean, I just. Okay. Let me just put <laughs> it first. You are you going to burst my bubble now? I need to let you know that. No, yeah, it's nothing. It's nothing. People right I here. like butter. <laughs> we, we both hate being the center of attention. We both hate all eyes on us. And it oh. took me. I was working a job before coming back with Libby, you know, more full time where I ended up having to put myself on camera for a nonprofit. So I kind of had gotten a little used to it when we decided to do more of this with, with conscious consignment. Libby was like, mm -mm, no, mm -mm, I, 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 I don't know. I can't. I, I, and look yeah. at her now. Yeah. Now she does yeah. stuff I was, and I don't I, even I know. And I'm like, set what? against it. I never was in front of a kid. I was never in front it of the would camera. Make, she literally would be sick to her stomach for hours prior to getting yeah. ready to it. I get it. I right. totally get it. But you seem like, you just seem like a natural. I just, I, I I'm, it's blowing my mind because you seem like you just, like you've been doing it for quite a long well, time. Well, this is what I keep telling her. These are all people who are friends and family and part of our community and <laughs> love yeah, us. Yeah. And they don't want... They don't want a made up newscaster. They want us yeah. authentically. And we want them. them. Like I, I, yeah. the reason the whole thing was born was because 
of this forefront. And I just missed, oh gosh, like I missed that interaction with customers. And but you make it, you make it like that online. And that's why I like it. I have never gone to a live sales event. And like Molly was saying about, we have similar backgrounds, Molly, with social media and, and nonprofits and stuff. And being authentic and organic is like one of the best things you can do. And that's why I enjoy, I enjoy you, your guys is I mean your social media and um the resale therapy and the brunch ladies it's because it's it's oh, awesome oh my gosh that means so much especially since this is like we're just finishing up our first our first year of this really yeah. Yeah. of putting ourselves out there and connecting with the community in this way and yeah and I, was, I mean we love it so much because we feel like Thursday night we're hanging out with our friends that's I mean, what it feels like. Yeah. I mean, we that's are enjoying the evening with friends. We laugh. We, you know, there's so many little inside funs and stories that are going on in the comments. Mm -hmm. and I, I've said it multiple We've times. We've shared a couple of tears, too. We've shared a couple of tears. tears. Yeah. yeah. But one of the things I love, and I even did a post about it on social media this week about, or was it, I think it was this past week. Right now, things are blending, so bear with me. Um is how many friends have you made online that you've never met in person? Oh, that was really good. And that's what I love about this is there are so many people that are, I, I, they are my friends. We've never met in person, but you're my friend. Yeah. Sherry's my friend. Michelle's mm -hmm. my friend. I mean, I have met people that I absolutely adore as online friends. Can't wait till the day we get together. Yeah. Which, by the way, in June, I'm coming out there. I just found out my niece is getting married in June. So oh. I'll be fine. Oh, you're welcome to stop over. by. We would love to have you. Wow, I'll see that's you. so cool. I'll get you coffee. <laughs> well, so I'm just telling, I'm, yes, we'll have coffee together. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So we'll figure that out. We'll, I'll reach out. Roll tap. See our inside jokes, as Sherry says, our roll tap. <laughs> that's the drinking She's game. That's the drinking the game, yes. So we'll be drink because Sherry put it out there. I got to <laughs> there's, there's inside jokes, but it's not so much because I was new to it. You know, mm -hmm. I, I came into it. And, and when you come into something new, you're like, oh, there's going to be that click of people who are already there. But there is also still that warm and, and welcoming you know, it's just, you guys have really created a unicorn. You know, it's it's a hard to find online where you don't have the viciousness. But what you said about um, meeting online friends and the online community, I mean, over the, I've been, I've been selling for eight years, right? And over that time, the friendships that have built and the support, and um, because I, I'm like what you said, Libby, is like we share the kind of the, some of the same um principles with uh, being positive and professional mm -hmm. and um, lifting each other up. What is it that you call it? Collaboration rather than competition? Yep. Collaboration. Yeah. Molly, you say it. Sing it out, Molly. That's your baby. Hashtag, hashtag collaboration over competition. I actually okay. started right. that when I was in the nonprofit. And then when I came back here, I realized, wait a minute, this works here big time. It big does. Time. It does. I mean, you'd think I'd compete with other fabric sellers, but some of my closest friends also sell fabric. It's it's a great network because out of print fabrics or vintage fabrics, I don't always have that specific fabric somebody's looking for. And if I don't, I can send them to Teresa or to Sue. And it's just, it's it's a happy customer that matters. Yes. That's like what we say all the time. Yeah. Yeah, it's like amazing you know, when you open yourself up to that mindset, the beautiful things that, that come from it and exactly. not just friendships, but like business wise, like what comes from that is, mm -hmm. is amazing. And I've yeah. said with consignment time and time again, if I am looking for a specific color of shoes and a specific heel height in my size, the chances of the first consignment store I walk into having it is slim. Right. So what better than for that consignment shop to say to me as a customer, we don't have that in stock. However, if you go two blocks down, there's a consignment shop there. They're one go check them out. They might have it. Right. So to me, that makes me want to shop that store all day long. Right. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. So I, I want to ask. So uh, you sell fat, you sell fabrics and everything like that. If somebody was just getting into quilting or they had questions on fabric, what would be the best way that they could, you know, get in touch with you, contact you, uh, find out more? Well, uh, it's easiest if they go to my Instagram, mm -hmm. which is click creative spelled C-L-I-C-K-C-R-E-A-T-I-V-E underscore 
great. Now I'm going to forget what it is. Chris. <laughs> <laughs> so click creative underscore Chris. And then at the top in the bio is the link to my website, which will take them to all the other social media and the stores. So I, have I know we have some, I know we have some crafters in the audience and that's not something that we really specialize in. And uh, so if somebody's interested, if any of you youngins out there, so that's 70 and below, uh, any <laughs> youngins out there <laughs> are interested in, in getting started or have questions, definitely, definitely visit Chris. Definitely visit Chris. Yeah, look me up. I, I like to give people the the um, quilt shop experience online. So if you're looking for something specific, a specific color, a specific uh pattern for a quilt or a pattern in your fabric hit me up i like to kind of help people match uh things for their project so i need to connect my mother-in-law with you yes i was thinking that i was thinking that she is a big time quilter or old i always enjoy meeting other quilters so that's She's been the great thing online selling is meeting other other quilters again especially when we've all been so isolated now, so, she's yeah. only online with Facebook and emails. Yeah. Um, but but I need to connect y'all. Yeah, I have a Facebook. Um, it's at the Click Creative. So I'm going to hook her up with you. Cool. So your things. Connections. It's yeah, all about exactly. connections. <laughs> So we are um, this week in our uh, on our social media, we've been talking a lot about connections and our program, Conchi Connects, which is our charity arm of Conchi Consignment. And we've gotten a couple of really good suggestions for uh, Q1 and Q2. We have some applications in the works. So we're trying to do my my thought is we're going to try to do two local uh, organizations since we're doing two national organizations Um so that's all in the works. If you guys have any input, feel free to contact either Molly or I or Country Consignment and uh, put your application in or have that conversation. It's really uh, great and a lot of fun. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> Love all right. It. Oh, my gosh. If you are watching this, please, 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 please. Hit that like button. <laughs> Hit that like button. Mash that like button. These ladies are fun. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you can it's do fun. it. <laughs> Molly and I are the worst self promoters. I swear, oh, it's like, oh gosh. Okay. And, you know, don't you, we should. You just love us, so you should just do it anyway. We don't need to promote it. <laughs> if you like us, hit the like button. If you don't, that's all right too. It's you easy know, to promote other people, but it's really hard to promote ourselves. I think. It don't is. You? Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. Is. yeah. I wonder what's, what's up with that. I don't know. I don't know. It's crazy, but it needs to stop. <laughs> You yeah, all we like have our people. We're good. You all like us, so subscribe, follow, like, get in it. All that good stuff. <laughs> and, uh, yep, everything will be linked up in the show notes. So I think this is our stopping point today because we all have uh, work to do. Yeah. And, um, thank you, Chris, so much for joining us. Thank you. It's such a joy. Me. I, I, a you guys, I enjoy you so much. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. It's great having you as part of the community. And uh, we'll be seeing you in the community. Yes. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.